First off, there are the impacts 12,800 years ago. That causes this cataclysm centered on North America, but global. And global temperature plummets. It, I mean, people who talk about global warming or today, what, what happened, the change in temperature 12,800 years ago was just stunning. And this is undeniable. This is Randall's undeniable. Randall's detailed it's, this in depth yes, the last time he was here absolutely. with mainstream scientific data that's irrefutable. Absolutely. Core samples, ice core samples. Absolutely. Things along those lines. And they call it, Joel just called it the Younger Dryas, and it's a 1,200-year mm -hmm. period. Temperatures plunge at the beginning, massive animal extinctions, and then 1,200 years later, equally suddenly, temperatures shoot up again dramatically. And there's another series of floods. So the, the, the period is 12,800 to 11,600 years ago. And I think, I don't know if Randall agrees, we're, we're sure that the comet was the cause of the first event 12,800 years ago. I think other bits of the comet were responsible for the second event as well. I think there was an impact in ocean, which threw water vapor up into the upper atmosphere, caused a greenhouse effect, and created that sudden spike in warming and that huge flood. Those two warming spikes show up very dramatically in the green and ice cores. <clears throat> and I pulled these up, I think, in the last meeting, but it, it would be good to reference it again. And um, basically what you see here is warming spike number one is here, and warming spike number two is here. And these were extreme, you know, we're talking about 10, 10 degrees centigrade, roughly, in perhaps a year or two. And this translates into about 17 or 18 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're talking many times greater than the, the warming of the last century or two. Um, instantly, basically just like that. And this, this is, this, this, what we see here brackets this, this whole ep episode of this, this period of transition from the glacial age to this nice warm Holocene interglacial age that we're in now. And, you know, Graham brought up about how this sits right at the very foundation of our modern history. And if you look at whether it's the dispersion of languages, the beginning of agriculture, the first cities, the domestication of animals, what you see over and over again is the same date showing up, you know, eight, nine, ten thousand years ago. And in this model that, that we're describing here, we're not really seeing the genesis of civilization. We're seeing the, the rebooting of civilization. Mm in the aftermath of these events. That it's I the think only thing that makes sense. This yeah. is, this is, this is, we have now, we have now the data that makes sense of what previously has been very mysterious and unexplained evidence. People have a hard time accepting some of this new information. I have a friend who's a scientist, and uh, the last time you were on, she said to me, did you have a climate denier on your show? Yeah. A climate change denier, and I said he's definitely not denying it. No, <laughs> no. Yeah. But some people—that's all they hear. When you bring forth a, a, a non-mainstream point of view or a controversial yeah. perspective, yeah. instead of considering the possibility, it almost immediately gets dismissed yeah. as well. This climate change thing is another nutty. ideological struggle. Yeah, sure, climate change is taking place, but what are the causes for this? You know, are we so sure that it's all caused by human beings? I would say there's very good reason for humanity to clean up our act Absolutely. in lots of yes. ways yep. regardless of the issue of climate change we're 100%. living we're, we're abusing mother earth we're living upon this planet like like parasites and yes. and destroying it we thoughtlessly create this gigantic pools of of pollution we're we're crazy enough insane enough to actually invent nuclear weapons and you know Detonate long them. periods of uh, detonate the bloody yeah. things y y you know this is there's lots about our behavior that we need to fix because it's right to fix it philosophically right we should not behave that way we should not behave that way to one another we should not behave that way to planet earth but to say that we need to fix our behavior because of global warming that's an ideological argument and that argument r remains to be properly tested yes global warming is occurring but are we the cause of it or is something else some some grander scale cosmic effect involved in this we, we, we talked about that considerably, and I noticed in a lot of the comments from, from our last discussion, most of the critical comments were people, you know, not liking the idea that I had questioned the dogma of global warming. But there are some facts that you can't escape. You know, the global warming began 200 years ago, 
and we see that the glaciers from the Little Ice Age began to shrink back in the early 19th century. Before there was, you know, a century before there was any significant human contri- contribution of CO2 to the atmosphere. So something was driving that warming that began. And <clears throat> it's important to realize that the Little Ice Age was probably the coldest period since the end of the Great Ice Age. In fact, the data overwhelmingly supports that, and that the glaciers grew to their largest extent around the planet in 10,000 years. So when we're talking about glacier recession, it's important to understand what the baseline is. Our baseline in this case is the biggest the glaciers have been in 10,000 years. And what's interesting, and this is going on right now, as the glaciers have been receding, geologists and biologists and and glaciologists and so forth have been studying um, the landscapes that are being revealed as the ice shrinks back. And you know what they're finding is the remains of forests that had been overrun by the Little Ice Age glaciers up, you know, and, and, and peat bogs and things that would suggest that prior to the onset of the Little Ice Age, those valleys that were filled with ice from roughly 1400 to 1800 were actually forested because the ice came down and overran these forests and now it's receding back and revealing that there were forests there. So that tells you that, you know, at some point, probably going back to the medieval warm period, those areas that were that have been glaciated during the early part of the 20th century were actually free of ice. And so, you know, the climate has been extremely dynamic. dynamic That's the thing yeah. we have to emphasize all by itself without any help from mm-hmm. humans. And this is what I've been saying is that we have to look at that and, and realize that, yeah, humans are a factor. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody I did post and said all the other factors I had mentioned as, you know, ocean currents and wind currents and geomagnetic field and cosmic rays and volcanism and all that had all been investigated and dismissed. And the only thing left was the human contribution. But, you know, to me, that's really, we're putting all our eggs in that basket, and that could turn out to be very dangerous because mm-hmm. we're so focused now on our own contribution that we might be overlooking the fact that there have been natural factors driving climate change over and over and over again. I mean, because I still have not heard any consensus on what has caused the planet to first go into an ice age and come back out of an ice age. And I think that what Graham and I are talking about actually presents a a possible solution to what could have brought this planet out of the ice age, something on a grand cosmic scale. And the other point I think I'd like to make is that we have to really to understand our planet as a system. We have to realize that it's part of a cosmic ecosystem. And the cosmos has been a much bigger player in what's been going on down here than has been previously understood or appreciated.